Hi guys! Welcome to the Freshwater Pearls podcast. I'm Hope and I'm coming to you from Michigan where I live with my family of four kids and my husband um, and our assortment of pets. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I thought I would do an episode. It's been almost a year since I podcasted. Um, so sorry about that if you were starting to follow the podcast and then it suddenly stopped. But um, what happened was I got pregnant for my fourth um, child, and then I was very sick and unable to knit for, I don't know, like about seven months. It kind of made me dizzy and feel a little bit more nauseous to knit, so I just kind of disappeared off the, the knitting planet, I guess. Um, so yeah, but I'm back now. I had the baby, so then um, it took a little bit of time to be able to figure out how to balance um, hobbies with the baby and also three other kids that I homeschool. Um, so she is, well, what is she now? I think she is six weeks old today. It's Saturday. She was born August 12th and her name is Meadow. So I am feeling good and ready to kind of um, connect with the knitting community some more. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you stick around, and if this is your first time, hopefully I am able to be regular enough to keep you from coming back, but I thank you so much for joining me today, and I'm hoping to make this um, perhaps uh, weekly or bi-weekly, probably bi-weekly, a bi-weekly podcast, just because I still don't have a ton, sorry, I still don't have a ton of time to podcast. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, a ton of time to knit, but I would like to uh, kind of get back into the, the knitting world. So, uh, yes, yeah, so today it is very hot and, um, I think my, my cheeks look a little bit, uh, they're glowing, <laughs> but it is hot here in Michigan today. I don't know. It's some sort of freak hot thing going on. Um, but there's like, we have in Michigan, we have like this. I don't know, stink bugs kind of blew up. Um, like the Michigan State University has articles and you have to call their number if, if you have tons of stink bugs. And we have tons of stink bugs. So I apologize if you see like little stink bugs crawling on the wall. But hopefully you don't. Um, I'm also in a different spot today. Um, now I'm hoping to do these on Saturday. So all my kids are awake and home. So I'm upstairs. Uh, where the air conditioning doesn't work as well. So I have a fan going. Hopefully it's not too noisy for you. But let's begin. Let's start with works in progress. So I will start with this one. It is the one that the, the, the work that I don't, that I'm not really working on a whole lot because it's not very, it's not very exciting. These are socks for my husband um, that I'm making for his birthday or for Christmas, whichever. <laughs> Hopefully they're done by one of those uh, holidays. But um, so yeah, I am making. Oh, it's, of course they're dark. Um, these socks, and it's just the I forget what it, the pattern is called. I should have looked it up. But um, it is one of the top patterns on Ravelry. It was very simple. It's free. Um, it just has the garter rib. Garter rib is that what you call it? Yeah, through. So I'm hoping that it will make them more stretchy for him. Uh, I made him some socks out of Patton's Croy, and I just did it. I just did them vanilla, and he likes them, but he doesn't wear them very often. So I thought, well, maybe the this yarn, which is Knit Picks uh, Stroll, in their, I think it's called Midnight Heather colorway. Um, maybe he would like them better if he if it was like a thinner yarn than Patton's Croy. So I think he'll wear his Croy socks more in the winter, like for shoveling and stuff, when he has to shovel snow and be outside with the kids. But I'm thinking these maybe he can wear uh, to work. So yeah, so it's just, I'm doing gray. What is this? I think this is um, like a, I don't remember. I got it at Joanne's. It's just a gray sock yarn. Um, so I'll do this for the toes, heels, and calves, cuffs, um, and then the Midnight Heather. 
so they're not very exciting, which is why they're taking me long. And this, I don't even have a sock down, and his birthday is in November, which is plenty of time to knit a sock, but I'm just not enjoying it very much, so <laughs> I guess hopefully I should make these priority come maybe November. <laughs> okay, so there are those, and I just am keeping this in my, I don't know, I found this bag at Goodwill or something. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm, I should have a sock talk section. People have sock talk sections because they have so many socks and I do have tons of socks this time. Okay, so next thing I'm working on is my socks for me, which are way more fun to work on. These are being knit out of Patton's Croy in the, oh, what is the colorway? The Brown Rose Marl. And it reminds me of the, the yarn that I used for my husband's socks that I knit him. It's, it was also patents, but it was darker. And I think it is actually like the same thing. These, this is just muted. So this is the patents. Can you see? Uh, and this is how far I'm, I am. This is kind of my car knitting. I should make my husband's socks my car knitting, but that doesn't sound very fun. So this is all I have. I'm knitting these. I, I'm actually trying a different toe this time, uh, which I of course do not have on me. <laughs> it's a, I can't remember. I'll try to link it in the show notes, but it's more of a rounded toe. Um, I'm going to just see if I like it for my feet. And I do 32 stitches, and I'm using U.S. size, and, and this is the same for the other socks. There's Chiagu, um 2.25 millimeter US 1 needles on double points. I really like double pointed needles for vanilla socks because you just kind of go around and around in it. It feels easier, faster to me than um, using the magic loop method. So I'm trying to figure out what I like the best, what method I like working on the best. Um, but I think so far I'm at vanilla socks, I like using double points. And I apologize, I'm also using the computer this time to record this, so I'm kind of, I don't, I keep forgetting where to look. So if I keep looking at myself, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to stay in the shot. So those are those socks. Then, I have more socks. And these I am knitting out of, or these I'm also knitting for me. And I am knitting these magic loop. I guess I have like a selfish knitting streak going on because <laughs> I want to knit all the socks for me. But, um, so yeah, I'm doing vanilla socks, um, two at a time, magic loop on, oh, what are these? Of course, I believe these are um, 2.25 and they're just the Knit Picks um, nickel plated needles. So here they are. Oh, sorry. See them. And I'm also doing the rounded toe for these as well. I will figure that out. I really like how it's constructed and the way it looks, but I'll see how it feels when I'm done. And I'm using, sorry, all my stuff is down here. I am using Quince and Company, their fingering weight yarn. I can't remember the color. I don't have the ball band. So sorry. They're blue. It's a nice, beautiful blue. Uh, I was originally going to use this for a, a color affection shawl, but decided not to knit it. So I'm using this for the heels, cuffs, and toes. And then I'm using my own hand-dyed yarn for the main part of the sack. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see that. I don't really know if this computer focuses on anything. No, I don't think so. Um, but it is, it's a really pretty like green, blue, brownish, yellow. When I dyed it, I was kind of thinking to knit it or to dye it like the land, sea, and sky. Um, so that was what inspired that color. So yeah, these I'm hoping to have finished, um, I don't know, soon. These are kind of my priority. I would like to get them done um, so that I can start on a new pair <laughs> of socks. Which I'll talk about later. Whoa, my hair is kind of creepy. Uh, sorry about that. Okay, so next I have... I'm sorry, I'm meaning... 
Um, I am knitting. I've talked to you before. Uh, I told you guys that I have English Angora rabbits. So I, um, before the baby was born, I spun up this beautiful, can you see that, the halo? Uh, beautiful white Angora. This is from my, my doe. Her name is Snow White. So this is Snow White's wool. And I decided to knit myself, <laughs> again, there's a trend here, uh, myself a hat. And it is just a hat that I, I guess I made up. It's a pretty, just a basic hat. It has uh, just the ribbing. I did about two and a half inches of ribbing and then um, I'll just knit, I'll probably knit about three more inches and then start decreasing. So there's that. I really enjoy, people sometimes don't like working with pure Angora um, because it does shed uh, and I do notice that um, more and more like as I'm knitting it I kind of like even just getting it out it'll like poof kind of um, but part of that might just be my spinning I kind of spun it loosely uh, but I really enjoy using pure Angora to knit with um, I enjoy spinning it it's a lot of fun to just um, you know spin something so soft so I really enjoy it uh, and I don't know if it's because the rabbits are mine. Sorry, I'm going to put my hair up a bit because it is so hot. I don't know if it's because the rabbits are mine and it feels cool to knit something that you kind of grew from, you know, like from baby bunny to bunny to shorn rabbit to fiber to spinning and then to yarn and then to knitting. Like, I don't know if it's just the process that is kind of meaningful or um, just like it feels, I don't know, it feels important like you grew this and it feels important to knit it. So I don't know if that's why I like knitting with it. Um, I don't know that I would like knitting with it if I didn't have the rabbits myself, but I do. I enjoy it and I am really excited to have this for winter. It'll be very warm because Angora is like seven or eight times warmer than sheep's wool, but it gets very cold here in Michigan. So um, I think it'll be worn um, quite a lot, as long as it doesn't like shed on my hair, because <laughs> I don't really want white hair, white angora hairs on my hair after I wear it. So there's that. A hat knit out of Snow White wool. Um, okay, next I have so many works in progress. I think I have I had like a cast on itis, um, and all my friends who are watching this who aren't knitters are probably laughing at me saying that. But I did, I just knit, like I cast on all the things right after the baby was born, which maybe was a mistake, but oh well. <laughs> okay, so I am um, working on, I start, I joined, well, it was my plan to join the Tuscan Knits Knit Along. She's doing a um, knit along that focuses on a capsule wardrobe so thing like a handmade capsule wardrobe so things that you would wear with several different outfits um, and things that would be like useful and in your colors like a I don't know you have to research capsule wardrobes because it kind of focuses on having just a wardrobe that's easier to wear that you do wear and that uh, you like wearing so I cast on this thing, so it's actually the Rosemont cardigan, and I stopped. I didn't realize I was halfway through a row, so I apologize for that. Um, but this is, yeah, the Rosemont cardigan by Hannah Fettig. Sorry for the clicking. So this is how far I am. Not very far. <laughs> uh, this is the, her cardigan that has the shawl, um, what do you call it? Shawl collar. Um, I don't know that I will keep knitting this. The problem is I have, I don't really have much of a yarn budget right now. And so this is, oh goodness, I think it's Lion Brand, their Heartland line. And it's, so it's pure acrylic and it's like this green, like hunter green, which I thought would I, I would really wear a lot, 
because I, I do like greens. Um, and I thought I would wear it with like leggings or jeans um, and with different like color, like a black or a white or gray or um, like a tan shirt underneath. So I know that I would use it a lot, but I don't know that I'll enjoy the fabric. It's just, it feels heavy to me, um, like in a weird way. <laughs> it doesn't feel like, in, like it would be enjoyable to wear. So I might save, sorry, I'm scooching up. I might save my like garment knitting for me until I am able to afford better yarn that I actually want to wear. So yeah, I really like the construction of it, the Rosemont cardigan by Hannah Fettig, if I didn't say that, but I don't know that I will knit it in the lion bread. So there's that. Um, okay, my last work in progress is something I'm knitting for my daughter. Let me get it all out here. Okay, so my daughter Mabel is turning three this week on the 27th of September. And she loves cats. So, sorry, I thought somebody was coming up. So I am knitting, and she, okay, so she asked me for a cat family. I asked her what she wanted for her birthday, and she said she wanted a cat family for her birthday with everybody in our family as a cat. So, um, which is actually, I don't actually know for sure that's what she wanted. She doesn't talk a whole lot. Um, she's in speech therapy for um, a delayed speech dis disorder. Um, so that is kind of what I'm guessing she said that she wanted. And I know that she will love it. So I'm knitting her a cat family. And since there are six of us in the family now, I am knitting her six cats. So this is the, um, the pattern is called Beans the Cat. And it's by Linda Dog Dawkins, Dawkins um, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. So, Beans the Cat. So, here are, it's a really cute pattern. It's so cute. They look like little kitten nuggets. I don't know if you know, I think Rebecca Danger is the one who has, like, something nuggets, a pattern. But, um, oh my goodness, it's so cute. And these I just used, like, some acrylic yarn held double. Um, so these are, here's the mommy kitty and the daddy kitty. So these are works in progress. They'll have eyes and be stuffed later, and I'll show them next time. Um, and here are their little tails. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. Okay, and then I have, well, I left some tails downstairs, but that's okay. Then I have the little kid cats. So here is the brother cat for my son, for him. Here's the big sister cat. Here's the Mabel cat. She's the one who is actually getting the gift. And here's the meadow cat, the baby kitty. And here are two of their tails. I haven't finished them. And the tails are like an I-cord and then you sew them like around the cat, I guess. So I haven't gotten that far, obviously, but next week I'll show the whole cat family. It'll be so cute. So yeah, that's the Beans the Cat um, pattern by Linda Dawkins. I hope, Dawkins, I hope I'm saying that right, but it's a really cute, really simple, really easy to follow pattern. You should all try it if you love cats. Um, okay, so now I'm going to go on to finished, uh, yeah, I think we'll do finished projects. Um, and these are just projects that I've finished that I, that you saw on the podcast, um, like the last time I podcasted like a year ago. <laughs> so there's nothing, like this isn't a lot. I didn't do a lot of knitting. It maybe will look like it since I haven't podcasted in forever. And this is like, this is just what I was starting when I showed you. So last time. So first I would like you to see, this was a test knit. I'm, I was a horrible test knitter and didn't finish it until like five months after. And I still haven't taken pictures of it. Terrible. But I absolutely loved working on this. This is a shawl by Knitterarium. Oh my goodness, it's so big you can't even see it. And this is Ruth of Knitterarium. And I can't even remember the pattern. Oh my goodness. But anyway, I'll, I will link it if you're interested. You know, let me know. If I forget, just let me know. Um, but yeah, it's this really beautiful, big shawl. Oh, it's so... I wish I could... I wish you could see it. <laughs> Can you see it? I don't know. Um, 
but I knit this out of my hand dyed. This the green is a hand dyed colorway. Uh, I don't know that you'll be able to see it, but it's a very pretty. It's pretty vibrant um, tonal green, and the white is just like a, it's a cream from Joanne's. What's that line that they call? They call it, uh, I forget, but it's it was a really fun fun knit, and I will get a lot of use out of it come winter. Well, it's kind of awkward to put on shawls during the podcast, but <laughs> I really liked it. You can, in Knitterarium, she has a podcast. Ruth has a podcast that's really, really fun, and she is a, a fantastic designer. I, I have been watching her. I think it's called Walking with Lizzie. Oh, I think that's what it's called. I think it's inspired by, I'm guessing, Pride and Prejudice, but I'm actually not sure. The shawls are amazing. Oh, I can't, I can't remember what what it's called but there's this one she has that is like pinks and really like a neon type color contrast it's so pretty so I think I might have to cast that on during the winter I don't know but Ruth she has some really fantastic designs and she has some really awesome sock designs that I've seen recently um that you should totally check out so go see her um so yeah that's that shawl and then I have these socks that I was working on, I still haven't wound in the ends, but um, yeah, these are the socks I was working on um, back in Christmas time. <laughs> uh, these are, oh, what are they called? The Speckled Space socks, I believe. And you can tell I did the pattern on half the sock. It's really, really fun, um, like V. It's supposed to go all the way up the foot, but I, so what I did was I was about here, I think, in July of this year. And Meg from Bad Wolf, Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits podcast, she, and she's a dyer too, but she was having a Christmas in July knit along. Um, and you can do gifts or anything Christmassy. And so I joined the knit along and I finished the socks and I had a baby and I forgot to, I never entered the sock. But I, to, but I did finish, so I was really bummed because I never, I have a really hard time finishing objects or posting objects when I joined it along, and I actually did it. I finished it, and I didn't even enter them to win anything. But there they are. These are knit. Um, this is the, I believe she calls it Vintage Christmas colorway by Woolen, um, the Woolen Homestead, I think is her name now. Um, she's Tiffany of the Woolen Homestead podcast which is an awesome podcast as well. She dyes beautiful yarn. She has this yarn called, um, oh, she has two that I'm like eyeing. One is called Dragon's Tear, I think, which is inspired by Game of Thrones. And then the other one is called Sweater Weather. And it's this beautiful, oh my gosh, you guys have to go check it out. Well, the Woolen Homestead. It's a beautiful yarn. I want it so badly, but I don't have a yarn budget right now. I so it's, it's on my Christmas list. <laughs> so anyway, I love this. And she actually gifted me this yarn last year. The knitting community had like a thing. I forgot what it was called. Get your yarn wish granted or something on Instagram. And if you granted a wish, you could ask like a wish. And I wished for some Woolen Homestead yarn because I just absolutely love her yarns. And she gifted it to me. I was so excited. She lives in Michigan, too. I don't think we're that far away. So someday, maybe I will fangirl girl her and meet with her. But these socks I love from her yarn. Um, and so those are all the works in progress that you guys saw me working on uh, last podcast, like a year ago. Um, now I'm going to have like a baby knit section because I went through this crazy thing in the summer where I knit all the things baby-ish. And there's actually not that many, but um, I knit her meadow a bunch of things. So I thought I would show you guys and get it out of the way, show you all my knits for her. Um, so yeah, so this one first is the flax sweater. And this one is the worsted weight version. Um... I knit it, I guess, this was actually, I knit before I found out I was pregnant with her, um, when we were trying, I guess, I, this was like my baby wish knit, like, I knit it thinking, 
hoping that I would get pregnant, I guess. So, um, yeah, so it is a blue color. I do, it's like a turquoise blue. I can't remember the color, but it is Quince & Co. in their worsted base. Um, but I did it in the blue because I didn't, at that point, I wasn't pregnant. Um, and so I thought, well, this is kind of gender neutral. I actually thought it leaned more. If you're in person, it, it's definitely more like turquoisey. I guess that's a pretty, so I actually thought it would be a really cute girl color anyway. Um, so yeah, so this is for her meadow and I will ever wear it in winter with like a really cute headband. So there's that, the flax sweater by Tin Canis, I believe. And then I have the, oh, I'm going to just butcher this name, but I didn't button it. The Popernum, Popernum cardigan? Um, yeah. And I did do buttons, but <laughs> I should have buttoned it. But I knit this out of, oh, I should have written it down because I didn't save the ball band anywhere. I don't think I have another, any other. Um, anyway, this was a yarn that I got from my local, local yarn shop, which is um, Woven Art in Lansing, Michigan. It's kind of on MSU campus. And I got it after I found out I was having a girl because if I, I told you earlier, I have two other girls other than Meadow, and I was getting really sick of pinks and purples when I was knitting this. So I decided to do this really pretty, um, it's like a greeny, yellow, I don't know what you call this color, but I really like it. Um, and she hasn't worn it yet because I was going to have her wear it last week, and but now it's 90 degrees, 95 degrees, and it's way too hot. So... Yeah, the Popernum Cardigan by, let's see, I wrote it down, Kelly Van Nickirk, Nickirk? but it's one of the top cardigans um, on Ravelry, so check that out, so cute. Um, the next one, I'll show you the next sweater I knit, this is, these are all the, the things that I knit pre-baby. This is the Baby Vertebrae, and this is by far our most worn baby knit. So if you are looking for anything, if you have any friends having babies, if you're having a baby, you need to knit this cardigan because Meadow wears it all the time. And I knit this out of um, Fawn and the Fox. Let's stay home. I believe that's her colorway. That's the colorway name. And I actually won it on a giveaway from um, the owl and the oak tree. I think that's the knitting podcast, Michelle. Um, I won this skein from there and I, I want to knit these in every size. I don't know. Is there, is there a pattern to knit bigger sized vertebrae because Meadow is going to grow out of this soon and I will be so sad. So if you know, if there's a pattern that has bigger or somebody's notes that has like a bigger, um, cardigan, I would like it to stay fingering weight. I don't want to knit a sport weight sweater just because it's just, I love it because it's so light. She can wear it anytime. So yeah, the baby vertebrae, and that, did I have that? I don't have who who actually made that, but whose pattern that is, I'm so sorry. And I don't have it for this next one either. <laughs> okay, but this is the last sweater thing that I knit, and this is the M3s cardigan, and I can't remember, I'm so sorry, this is a paid for pattern. Um, I can't remember who wrote it, but it's so cute. I don't know if you can see it. Um, Meadow hasn't worn this yet either. I knit this one after she was born, hoping that it would fit a little longer. And I'll probably have her wear it with something <clears throat> like a little pink onesie underneath of it or something like that. But yeah, so the only like really girly colored thing, I mean, I guess this is girly, like boys probably won't wear this, but the only thing really girly was the vertebrae that I, as far as yarn color. Okay, my last baby knit is this one. This is so cute. And she hasn't worn this one yet either. This is called the Clean and Easy Baby Dress, I believe, by Pearl Soho. And it is, I knit this out of yarn that I got from a friend of mine has a an Etsy shop that she, where she sells re what do you call it like re recycled yarn I guess she gets like sweaters from thrift shops and then um unwinds them and 
rewinds them. <laughs> anyway, this yarn I just love. It's I think it's actually an Agora blend, um, but it's very soft and it really made this dress really cute. But I knit a green thinking I would put something girly underneath of it. And I really like this green for girls anyway, but it's really fun. And this is a free pattern. Um, it has like a linen stitch top and then just stack a net down and then um, linen stitch at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a super fun pattern. The construction is kind of fun and unique. Uh, the back is just the plain linen stitch, um, but it is a top down. Very, very fun knit. You're supposed to do uh, like a finished edge on the edging, but I decided not to. I like it just the way it is. So um, the stink bugs are coming. Uh, so yeah, so this is a really fun baby knit as well. If you have a little girl and you need a little baby dress. So I'll have her wear something, some really cute leggings underneath it. And as it gets warmer, I'll have her wear like long sleeve, long sleeved, um, I don't know, little cute little shirts underneath of it. So there's that. And I also wanted to show you guys this um, super cute sweater that my neighbor, she, well, she was my neighbor. She moved away. Made me so sad. Her name is Diane. She knit me this adorable little jacket <clears throat> for Meadow. This was before, before they moved. My neighbor, sweet neighbor, knit this for her. And I have never received a knitted gift ever. So this was really special because I think people think when you're a knitter that you can just knit things for yourself. And so like, I mean, you're knitting people socks and scarves and shawls and all these hats, like things, and people don't ever think to knit stuff for you. But I, so I thought it was so special that she knit this super cute little jacket for Meadow. It's so fun. And it has this adorable little like elf hood you love it it's so cute and these uh really fun sunshine buttons so I don't know the pattern that she used um but it's super super cute I don't know if you can see it better this way but there you go hopefully you can't hear the kids crying at the door my husband is downstairs they just know I'm up here so <laughs> um okay lastly I was just gonna go into spinning since I am spinning right now I won't always have a spinning section, but like I said, since I am spinning now, I will show you some. Um, right now I am spinning in Goro like it's crazy because, well, I'm trying. This is all that I've been able to do in five weeks because as soon as I pick up my wheel, the baby cries. Um, I'll just show you the wheel. If you find on the wheel, which will be really awkward, but I don't want to take the bobbin off. So <laughs> here is what I'm spinning. Let's try to sit still. Can you see it? Okay. Um, and that is some pure Angora from my Angora rabbit named Cosmos. Um, he is a black Angora. And as you can see, the the Angora actually comes off. It's kind of quite gray, uh, which is normal for English Angoras to be very muted colors. Um, but you, when you see him next to, like next time maybe I'll have a project going with it. When you see a black angora next to like a white angora's wool, you can definitely see, oh, there's a stink bug on my wheel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> stink bugs. Um, but when they're next, when the black is next to the white, you can definitely see the color difference. Um, so they're really fun. And next time I'll have my one of my angoras on the podcast so you can actually see what they look like um, before they are sheared. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping to finish uh, a good skein's worth of that yarn, um, I don't know, in the next couple weeks when I, if I have time. I'm not pressuring myself into finishing that because spinning isn't something, I don't love spinning. I do, I love the process like that they came from my rabbits. It's not my favorite thing, my favorite fiber art to do. So I, I only want to spin it so that I can knit it. <laughs> so Hopefully I will get it done, but if not, I'll just keep trucking on with my other projects. Um, okay, so uh, I thought I would have a future knitting section, um, and then I would also kind of tell you guys what podcasts I'm listening to um, or watching, and um, yeah, I'll do that now. <laughs> Here's a commentary on my podcast. Okay, so 
right now I am eyeing the Clark socks like crazy. They're by Jacqueline Salem. She has the Brooklyn, oh my goodness. Is it Brooklyn Knit Folk? Here's some information I don't about know. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh, my phone just heard me <laughs> say Brooklyn. Anyway, I am absolutely loving those socks, the Clark socks. I'm seeing everybody knit them. Um, so it's making me crazy. But I have tons of socks on the needles that I really need to finish. I don't think I'm going to wait, though, because I can't. But I ordered, I had to order some 32-inch um, circulars from Amazon the other day, yesterday. So I'll be able to start them Sunday or Monday um, if I decide to go through with it, uh, which I'm sure I will. Um, so I'm hoping to cast those on next week. Um, and I wanted to get the 32 inch because I thought with the cable, I might like, I'm going to just do one sock at a time, magic loop. But, um, I thought I might like the magic loop for the cable on that, those socks. But yeah, that's a paid for pattern on Ravelry, the Clark socks by Jacqueline Salem. Um, then I also thought I would want to knit, sorry, I'm looking at the, trying to find the pattern. I can't find it. Okay. It's the Morganite hat and that is by Mimi. Mimi Cog, I think that is her name. Um, she is has some really really fun um, patterns on hers, but that pat that hat pattern is awesome. Like, I think I missed test knitting it by a couple weeks. I was hoping that I could test on it when she posted it, but she already had testers. Um, but I am going to cast that on probably after I finish my the hat that I'm doing from the Angora. I'd really like to have that hat. And it looks like a really, really fun gift knit um, because the hat is so unique. Like, there, I, I wish I had a picture. Um, but there's, like, little windows, um, if that makes any sense, of color and cabling. And, oh, it just looks so fun. So um, I really would like to do those two knits in the next week or so. I'd like to cast those on. Um, some podcasts that I'm really enjoying right now are... Uh, I really am loving Love Sock Wool. Oh, I can't remember her name. Is her name Sarah? Everybody knows about this podcast by now. But it's Love Sock Wool podcast. She knits so many beautiful socks. Like, when I watch her podcast, I'm, I just look at it and I'm like, how? How are you knitting all those beautiful socks? Why can't I do that? So, I really love watching her podcast. As it kind of motivates me to knit because she just enjoys her knitting so much. Um, she just seems like such a, like, sweet, uh, fun person, and I just, I enjoy her podcast a lot. Another one that I found this week, um, is, um, the Acorn, oh my goodness, I know her name, Julie, from the Autumn Acorn Knits podcast. She, I absolutely love her aesthetic. Um, it's, she films in this little cabin that she has in, like, her backyard, um, she has beautiful knits going. She has really fun yarn choices. <clears throat> and, um, I don't know. I just, I love her podcast. There's something about that podcast that I just, like, I'm, I, I'm checking my YouTube, my YouTube subscriptions every day to see if she, <laughs> if she's updated. So I'm obsessed. So those two, I, I really love. So check them out if you haven't already. Um, sorry. <laughs> there's, there's steak pods. Um, and then lastly, I thought I would just share with you what I'm reading right now because I really love to hear what other people are reading. Um, and I'm not reading anything knitted, knitted related. Um, I don't, and I was going to bring the book upstairs with me, but I forgot it. And then I was afraid to go back downstairs to disrupt the peace of the children. <laughs> so, um, but I'm reading, it's a book called Different and the author is Sally Clarkson. Um, it's this. It actually, Sally and Nathan Clarkson, her son, wrote this book, <clears throat> and it's about, it's a, it's just a book about her son, Nathan, who grew up with some learning differences and um, some, some diagnosed problems, um, issues that created struggles in learning and um, as he was growing up and just how they overcame it and what it was like um, to raise a child that had some differences and I'm really drawn to it because my son is, uh, does have some, some things that make it harder for him to learn. He does struggle with things. He has some learning differences that 
create hardship among like our, in our schooling and um, socially for us, uh, for him, um, that, that kind of, they're really hard to, I don't know, it's hard to, it's just hard. It's hard to go through those things with your child and kind of feel pressure from other people or feel guilt that, that you've maybe did something wrong or I don't know. So I, I have those feelings a lot with him. So I, I was really drawn to the book different by Sally and Nathan Clarkson. And I'm really loving it. It's so encouraging. It's just a beautiful story of everything that they've gone through. So and it's written from her perspective as a mother and from his as the child who was struggling. So check it out if you have any children that are struggling or if you are no parents that are struggling, um, anything. It's just great. It's great to learn about other people to just make you more aware of other what, what some children might be going through instead of judgment to feel, um, to give them grace and to help them in their struggle. So yeah, different by Sally and Nathan Clarkson. Um, and that's all I have for today. It was kind of a long podcast. I, sorry, I'm sorry if it was too long for you. Um, but I do thank you for checking me out again, and I really do hope that I can make it a more a more regular thing, and hopefully without stink bugs this time, because they're everywhere. Um, but yes, I hope you have a great week, and enjoy the last of summer if you are in the north, like I am, um, and just happy knitting. See you later.